So far in my Bleach gameplay videos, we have covered every Bleach game that was released on Sony home consoles and handhelds. Now, in this video, I will be starting to cover all of the Bleach games that were released on Nintendo devices. We will be starting off with the Bleach games that were released on the GameCube and on the Nintendo Wii. Now, as with most of these Bleach games, I have not played any of the games that we'll be covering in this video. So, you'll be getting my first impressions of these titles. And as far as the games are concerned, we will be talking about one GameCube game and two Nintendo Wii Bleach games. Let's start with the earliest entry which is Bleach on the GameCube. So the first Bleach game that was released on Nintendo home consoles has the mysterious title of Bleach Shinigami in the Twilight. It was released on the 8th of December 2005 and unfortunately it is a Japanese exclusive title but I'll try my best to navigate through the game as the menu and character names are thankfully in English. Bleach on the GameCube is mostly a weapons based fighting game and it features a very simplified control scheme. Every character in this game has several combos that they can utilize as well as special and super attacks. The story featured here mostly covers the Soul Society arc. Unlike some of the previous games I've spoken about, this game does feature cell shaded graphics, which is a big plus in any game that is adapting an anime or manga art style. I've heard that the cutscenes in this game are impressive for its time, and that the voice actors from the anime have made their return for this game. In terms of gameplay, it is a fairly quick game to beat, but unlocking the characters in this game is a very tedious task. At the time that this game was released in 2005, it was pretty popular amongst Bleach fans, even some international fans having imported this game in. This GameCube entry is a relatively fun weapons based fighter. It has over 27 playable characters. This game is a average fighting game. It's another title that is a must play if you're a Bleach fan, but it won't really appeal to non-fans. Now this is my first time playing this game, so let's see how Bleach and the GameCube actually plays. So let's start by diving into the single player and having a one versus one battle against the CPU. So I'll play Ichigo. Okay, I think this is a little bit of an arcade style. So we're facing off against Uryu in our first battle. Again, all of the voice actors have returned from the anime for this game. Okay. It's an interesting art style. In comparison to the PS2 Bleach games, it does look better than those, at least the PS2 games that were released in 2005. I think Uryu is fairly annoying in this game because he just spams his arrows. I was concerned initially that this game appears to be pretty slow, but I think once you get the hang of the controls, then it's not all that too bad. So you can sidestep. There's two buttons for attack. You can block and charge your Reiatsu. I think if you charge your Reiatsu and your enemy comes into the line of it, then it activates a mode called slow mode. So that's slow mode. So it slows down your opponent's actions and allows you to just beat on them. It is an enjoyable game to be honest with you. He just starts spamming the arrows once you get a little bit of distance on him. Okay, so cool. You can do get to get intro as well. It feels like Blade Battlers, but you know, without the arena aspect of it. Okay, time out. So I won that round. That's the only issue. I feel like some of the rounds can drag on for a bit longer and there are quite a few timeouts that can occur like that. This game's got a heavy focus on the Soul Society arc. Released in 2005, there wasn't really much of the story to kind of adapt into a game. So we've only got really up to the Soul Society arc. I don't even think Bankai each goes in this game. Wow, I'm surprised that they've managed to get Ganju into this game. He's got a proper moveset. I think that's the interesting thing. No two characters will play the same in this game. So each character has their unique abilities and moves that they can utilize and combos. Oh, it's not the most challenging game to be honest with you. I'm uh, flying through these battles. Character models look on point really. Obviously, uh, the lips aren't moving with actual voice acting, so it is limited in that sense. But it's just a game of its time to be honest. 2005, it wasn't really that advanced for graphics. I always find it interesting when they've got Hitsugaya in the game. So we saw Hitsugaya in Soul Resurrection. This game also has a very nice character model of Hitsugaya. 2005, you can't get better than this. Bleach Nagami in the Twilight definitely lives up to my expectations. It's got some really interesting gaming mechanics, like I love this slow motion mood. Obviously I haven't got time to like learn all of the combos, but you can tell that it's, you know, a rather fleshed out game. Yeah, I think I'll be able to play through every single battle. Okay, now if you've been watching these videos, then you know of our difficulty with Chad in the previous Bleach games. So let's see how Chad is like on the GameCube. Oh, that was nice. Oh god, okay. God damn it, this guy's just blocking now, blocking every attack. God damn it. Chad is also proving to be pretty difficult on the GameCube. I'm not even gonna give him an opportunity here now. Oh wow. 
Chad was not going down, he's got a solid defence. Okay, in our next fight, we're facing off against Ginichimaru. Play through a solid few games of this now. It's definitely an enjoyable game, this GameCube Bleach game. I think they stay laying down on the floor for a bit too long. That's a wild move that you just stab your sword into somebody or they're laying down. They've done a good job of utilising the very few moves that we had seen. Up until this point in the story, we'd only really seen Ginichimaru utilise a handful of moves during his encounter with Ichigo and then during some skirmishes with Hitsugaya. But they've done well to translate all of that into a moveset. Really making quick work out of all of these opponents. Ichigo vs Ichigo in our sixth battle. Oh god damn it. Wow. Okay, so this is the first uh, full motion video cutscene that we've seen. I stand corrected. Bankai Ichigo is in this game. So I think the more that you attack and receive damage, your energy gauge in the bottom left fills up. I think those orbs are indicative of what special attack you can utilize. You've got to love the fact that this game has 27 playable characters. I mean, there's so many here from up to the Soul Society arc. Even characters like Ikaku made the cut. You know, I really recommend this game. If you've got a GameCube lying around and you want to play a good Bleach game, I definitely recommend Shinigami in the Twilight on the GameCube. Such a good, enjoyable experience if you're a Bleach fan. I definitely rank this up there with the Blade Battlers games on the PS2. Then the main point in this game, if you've got enough Reishi charged up, then you can really decimate your opponents. Oh, Head Captain Yamamoto, wow. This is going to be an interesting battle. Head Captain Yamamoto has been based off of his encounter with Chunsui and Ukitake during the Soul Society arc. We didn't really get to see much of the Head Captain during that battle, it was mostly off screen. This makes me feel like I'm facing off against uh, Heihachi from Tekken. Okay. Oh, it's a solid back and forth. Head Captain packs a punch. Cut that out, dude. You cannot power up with me. Trust the head captain to sidestep Bankai. Okay, okay, I've got him. No! Even in slow mode, he's hitting back. This guy is a beast. Yes! I hope this takes him out. Head captain's pretty difficult in this game. He's still not gone. Oh my god, I had literally the tiniest amount of health left. And the time was on zero. Okay, we've cleared single mode. That was Bleach on the GameCube. What an enjoyable, fun game. We're going to be moving on to the Nintendo Wii now. And there are two Nintendo Wii games that we need to cover. The first being Bleach Shattered Blade. Bleach Shattered Blade for the Nintendo Wii was originally released in Japan on the 14th of December 2006 and it was localized and released in the USA on the 9th of October 2007. This was 10 months after its original Japanese release. Now on a strange side note, Europe and Australia ended up getting this game in February 2008. When this game was released for English speaking fans, the dubbed version of the anime was still only on the Soul Society arc, with Renji vs Byakuya airing on Adult Swim in the US during the same month that this game was released in the US. Now this game features several game modes, with the most notable being episode mode, where we see 8 different characters play through 10 different battles in an all original story filled with cinematics and game exclusive voice acting. There is also a versus mode and an arcade mode, which allows you to play with up to 32 characters. Now the most interesting thing about this game in particular is that it has a game exclusive new character that was designed by Kubo. This character is an Aranka called Arturo. Plateado. He is the main antagonist of this game and he has a similar design to Grim Zhao and he has the ability to take up the form of anybody including Zompakdo spirits or members of the Gotei 13. Apparently in the past Arturo had raided the Soul Society but he ended up being sealed below Sokyoku Hill by the Shinigami. This had occurred 2000 years before the present timeline of Bleach. Similar to Bojack from Dragon Ball Z Movie 9, when Ichigo destroyed the Sokyoku to save Rukia it ended up breaking the seal that was placed on Arturo thus freeing him. And now the 10 battles that you take part in during story mode with all of the 6 different characters all conclude by you facing off against Arturo. In general, fans really enjoyed this game and they praised it for its interesting game exclusive story mode and the casual fun fighting style. But in general, the mechanics and depth are just not present within this game. And there is no comparison when you put this up against Smash Bros Brawl which was released during the same time as this game. This game heavily utilized the Wii 
mode for controlling the characters on Bokdo. A lot of these gimmicky gameplay mechanics that I never really liked when it came to Wii games. In my opinion, when it comes to Bleach Shattered Blade, there was not enough focus on the overall quality of the game. Bleach Shattered Blade is a typical 3D anime fighter, and we've played through several of these at this point. This first entry on the Wii is very reliant upon the Bankai Gauge. When the Bankai Gauge fills up, a corresponding flame lights up and it allows you to activate a character's Bankai. This gauge is filled when you either deal damage to your opponent or receive damage. The problem is that once the meter is full and you activate your attack, you have pretty much won the fight. So it ends up being a race to see who can fill their Bankai gauge first. Even when you activate your Bankai, you're pretty much indestructible. And every attack that you deliver while you're in Bankai is super powerful, which makes it even easier to defeat your opponent. Let's start this game off by going onto episode mode and trying to play through Ichigo's story mode in this game. So you've got Ichigo, Hitsugaya, and Renji. So it plays Ichigo. A lot of the story is delivered in these kind of cutscenes where you've got some dialogue which are voice acted. It's a pretty nice touch to be honest, especially with the English voice actors you know, voicing all of their respective characters. Okay, so that's interesting. So the loading screens are Orihime's drawings. Okay, that's a pretty nice touch. We've not seen that in any of the other Bleach games. Facing off against Renji in our first battle of story mode. Again, this game plays very different to the GameCube game, so it's going to take a bit of getting used to. Very fast-paced. Appears as though you just gotta win one round to progress on to the next opponent. Again, I love the fact that it's voice acted here. The lip flaps are actually moving, which is a plus. This game's controls heavily rely on the Wii Mote and the Nunchucker. So as you can see, you have to move the Nunchucker left and right in order to actually uh, power up your Reiatsu. Yeah, this game also has this very interesting mode here where you clash with your opponent and you have to get your control within that green bar. I think it happens within five times. Whoever actually wins each round, you know, wins this encounter. Kira is so annoying, he's just literally spamming the same move over and over again. That was uh, really frustrating. Kira genuinely <laughs> made me go all out there. Okay, well, at least through his fight, I learned how to activate Bankai, so that was a plus. It's pretty difficult when you're trying to, you know, navigate through the controls because it relies on the Wiimote and on the Nunchucker and I've only got a DualShock 4 controller that I've mapped the controls to, so it's a little bit difficult to kind of make this game work. Oh my god. So we faced off against Chad on the PS2, PSP, and we faced off against Chad on the GameCube. And now we're facing Chad on the Nintendo Wii. Yasutora, the Chad Sado. Uh, it's easier than Kira. Feel bad for doing this to Chad, but he deserves it. After how much trouble he's caused us across all of these gaming platforms. <laughs> that had to be done. <laughs> I'll win this. Oh, draw. This reminds me of uh, the Dragon Ball Z games, I think they had a very similar mechanic when you were going through energy clashes with your opponent. I wonder what they're going to do with Ganju's transformation. He's just powered up really. He's got nothing on Bankai. After you've seen that a couple of times, it does get really old. I think once you figure out the controls, it's uh, fairly easy to play through the game. Oh! Ichigo vs Kimpachi. This should be a little bit more difficult. So I keep my distance with this guy. Okay, we'll activate Bankai and we might have a chance against this guy. Okay, he has also activated his uh, power up. Oh my god. Have I done it? Yes. That was a really tricky fight. I'm not going to tell you how many times I pressed retry on that Kimpachi fight, but we've beaten him. We're up against Orihime now in our next fight. <laughs> That's a bit harsh to say to Orihime. A lot of Ichiruki fans were happy with that. Yeah, that was a pretty straightforward fight. Orihime literally just stood there and did nothing. Or you pretty much didn't do anything during that fight also. It stood there, fired a few arrows, but uh, it's fairly easy to defeat. 
Okay, common more is down. Clearly, this new Aranka character, Arturo, is disguising himself as all of these different characters, and he's gonna be the last opponent we face off against. Okay, now we should be facing off against the newly designed character for this game, Arturo. He's the big plot twist, guys. Here is Mr. Big Bad himself. Quite strange that he's dressed exactly like an Esparta. Wonder if Aizen knows about this guy. This guy's playing out every villain cliche. Okay, so final battle of story mode, facing off against Mr. Big Bad himself. This game was such a pain to figure out the controls of. It's so hard to replay Wii games without the actual peripherals of the Wii. The battle against Arturo is not much different than what we've seen before. It plays exactly the same as the previous encounters. Fairly enjoyable game, difficult because of the controls. And like I'd mentioned back when I'd introduced this game, Bleach Shattered Blade is not much of a challenge really. You activate Bankai, spam a few special attacks and you've won the game. The next Nintendo Wii game is the final game that was released on a Nintendo home console. This game is regarded highly by a lot of fans. I know that when I had made my videos on the PS2 and PS3 games, a lot of people had told me to check out the second game released on the Wii called Bleach vs Crusade. Fun fact about Bleach vs Crusade, it has opening 9 as its intro. It's another Japanese exclusive game that was released on the 18th of December 2008. This game focuses heavily on the Aranka arc, featuring up to 25 playable characters, which doesn't include their respective Bankai or release states. Most of these characters can be unlocked by completing the story mode. Thankfully, this game is not reliant upon the motions of the Wii mode and you can just play like any typical 3D fighter. Once again, we have the original voice actors that are returning from the anime for this game. This game has up to four players battling it out on stage, which is similar to Blade Battlers on the PS2. I am running a English language patch on this game, so we can actually read through what modes we're selecting. So we've got fight through the story mode, we've got select from any of the versus modes, so we'll have a go at versus mode players Ichigo, my partner will be Shinji. The graphics are quite janky in this game to be honest. Surprising especially for a 2008 Wii game. I mean the GameCube looked better than this. Maybe it's just because of the way that the game is. And this game is fairly fast paced. You can switch between yourself and the partner character which is pretty fun. Dashing with X is <laughs> really enjoyable too. So in this game characters can also transform. So we're facing off against uh, Kimpachi next. Definitely an experience this game. It's somewhat similar to Blade Battlers, but it reminds me more of uh, the Tenkaichi games, to be honest with you. Okay, so I've activated Bankai finally. I've got to say that the environments are pretty fun to play in. We've got Karakura Town at night here. All of these games are definitely button bashing experiences, uh, I'll give you that. Camera angle went a bit weird though, okay. It can be a lot going on sometimes. It's quite hard to tell what on earth is going on if you've got this many players facing off against each other. Wow, Zomari. This is somebody that you don't see every day. Oh, Grim just appeared. Shinji's pretty badass. Wow, Nell yells in this game too. This will be my last fight on Bleach vs Crusade. I think we've uh, got an idea of all of these games at this point. It's uh, much of the same, 3D fighters, all pretty fun games if you're Bleach fans, but what sense are you going to make any of this if you don't know anything about Bleach? There we go. With this being the final entry for the Nintendo Wii, it's much like the other games that we've covered. You will enjoy it if you're a Bleach fan, and prior to Bleach Soul Resurrection releasing on the PS3, this was the best Bleach experience for home consoles, I'm afraid. But because I have played Bleach on the PS3, and I don't really have any nostalgia for Versus Crusade, it does end up being a very average fighting game in the end. After having covered these three games, we have spoken about all of the Bleach games on Nintendo home consoles. All three of these titles that we played today were 3D fighters, and some were easier to play than others, especially with Shattered Blade relying on the Wiimote controls, which made the game a little bit more difficult to emulate. I surprisingly really enjoyed the GameCube Bleach game, and it was pretty fun to play, especially for a game released back in 2005. It was definitely better than some of the PS2 Bleach games that I had to play. The only games that we have left to discuss now are the Bleach games that were released on the Nintendo DS, and in my upcoming final video discussing Bleach games, we will be going through all four of the Bleach games that were released on 
on the DS. Definitely stick around and join me in my next video. And if you enjoyed my coverage of Bleach on the Nintendo home consoles, then definitely let me know in the comments. Did you play through any of these games growing up? And are there any games that you actually want to play after watching this video? Definitely continue the discussion in the comments and I can't wait to see you in my final Bleach gameplay video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with the rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.